الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحبه أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters, my dear children السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today إن شاء الله I'm going to talk about لا للكبر No to arrogance and pride. Al-kibr, in Arabic, uh, other words like al-ta'ali, al In English, we have words like haughtiness, conceit, uh, egotism, self-importance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits us from behaving arrogantly in any situation. Whether you are an individual or you are a nation. Allah destroyed individuals in the past and destroyed many nations because they were so arrogant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 23, chapter 16, the bees, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Innahu la yuhibbu al-mustakbirin He does not love those who are arrogant. The story starts with Satan, Shaitan, when the king of the jinn was invited to attend the creation ceremony of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, and this genie refused to prostrate himself to Adam when Allah commanded him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, why you did not prostrate yourself to Adam? when I commanded you and he said I'm better than him you created me from fire and you created him from clay and as I mentioned many many times in the past that was the first ever racist remark to be passed by anyone so those who are racist they are arrogant and Allah does not love them in verse 73 chapter 38 Sad. فَسَجَدَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعُونَ All the angels prostrated themselves to Adam. And in verse 74, إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ Except Iblis إِسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ He was haughty and became one of those who reject faith. So Allah gave him the title Iblis at that moment. He was, he was a good creature before, but because of the jealousy, and because of the arrogance made him so evil and he became a kafir and Allah gave him the title Iblis which means the root is balasa despaired from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Qala ya Iblis ma man'aka an tasjuda lima khalaqtu bi adai O Iblis what prevented you from prostrating yourself to someone I created with my own hands? Astakbarta am kunta min al Question here. Are you haughty? Or are you one of the high and mighty ones? Qalana khayrum min. I'm better than him. Just as simple as that. Why should I prostrate myself to him? Better than him. So, being arrogant and haughty resulted in the expulsion of this genie completely from the mercy of Allah. In Surah Fussilat, chapter 41, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the nation, the first nation which was destroyed because of their arrogance, that was Qawm Aad. فَأَمَّا عَادٌ فَاسْتَكْبَرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَقَالُوا مَنْ أَشَدُّ مِنَّا قُوَّةٌ أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُمْ هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ قُوَّةٌ وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَجْحَدُونَ عَادٌ the people who uh, the prophet was Hud and they were the people who uh, came after Nuh 
عليه الصلاه والسلام and they settled in the southern of Arabia where we have now Yemen and uh, the other states in the south as for Ad they arrogantly or they behaved arrogantly through the land against all truth and reason without any justification and said who is superior to us in strength they were so powerful so mighty so advanced and unfortunately the statement they said unfortunately being repeated by many nations after that what did happen to them Allah is saying to them أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُمْ هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنْ قُوَّةِ Haven't they seen that Allah who created them has more strength than them? Whom are they comparing themselves with? Other nations. They, they, they forgot about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا فَاسْتَكْبَرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ And they behaved arrogantly through the land against all truth and reason without any justification. What happened to them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them fully. In verse 16, صرصراً في أيام النحسات لنذيقهم عذاب الخزي في الحياة الدنيا والعذاب الآخرة أخزى وهم لا ينصرون. So we sent against them a furious wind through days of disaster that we might give them a taste of a punishment of humiliation in this life but the penalty of the hereafter will be more humiliating still and they will find no help in surah yunus chapter 10 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the arrogance of pharaoh and his people when musa and harun والسلام, came with the message of allah to them in verse 75 and we have sent after that Moses and his brother Aaron with our signs to Pharaoh and his chiefs what did they how did they react unfortunately they were arrogant or they behaved arrogantly and they refused to accept our signs they were wicked people and the word mujrim in arabic means a criminal a sinner they were really real criminal real sinners wicked people and what happened we all know that allah drowned pharaoh and his host and destroyed them fully so in the same way would allah destroy an individual who's so arrogant he will also destroy nations the whole nation because of the leadership and they the people accepted such a leadership and they did not revolt against them and became part of the system so consequently they all faced the same unfortunately fate they all been destroyed you may recall a few weeks ago i was talking about god's moral law and i mentioned few things from surah Al-Isra chapter 17 and uh, verse 37 verse 37 chapter 17 Allah commands us وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا now he's talking to us as individuals do not walk on the earth with insolence don't be arrogant don't hurt the feelings of other people. You will not be able to penetrate the earth nor reach the heights of the mountains. Beautiful reminder here. Do not walk on the earth with insolence for you cannot rend the earth asunder nor reach the mountains in height. This is verse 37 chapter 17. And in chapter 31, Luqman, the wise man, when he was admonishing his own son, one of the things he said to him, 
in verse 18 wala tusa'ir khaddaka linnas do not swell your cheek for pride at people don't look at them like that don't ignore them don't look down on them make an eye contact wala tamshi fil ardi maraha so don't swell your cheek at people ولا تمشي في الأرض مرحا and don't walk in insolence through the earth why? so the father is admonishing the son why father? why shouldn't I do that? the father said إن الله لا يحب كل مختال فخور because Allah does not love any arrogant booster you lose the love of Allah when you behave like that so always Remember to be humble, to be modest. Because if you are like that, people would love you more and Allah will raise you in the eyes of the people. Don't hurt their feelings. Don't look down on them and walk on earth in humility because the dust you are walking on is made out of beautiful eyes. People like you who died and turn it into dust you are walking on them and one day you also will die and you will become dust and people will walk over you remember that and remember if you are behaving arrogantly because of the seat you have been given because the position you have acquired remember on the day of judgment there will be, there will be no seats we are all going to stand in front of the judge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will have no seat on the day of judgment. On the contrary, the only seat, the only arsh will be of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there will be those who will enjoy the shade of the arsh of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I don't mean arsh like a chair or like throne, someone sitting on it, because Allah does not have this sort of uh, explain, uh, 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 description or, 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 or attribute that uh, he has a throne or, or a kursi or arsh and he's sitting on no, no, metaphorically it means the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now I'm going to tell you a story today regarding a man who was from the people of Musa you know Bani Israel lived in Egypt for almost 600 years they came uh, from the time of Yusuf والسلام, and Jacob and they remained in Egypt until Musa they lived about 500 600 years and they prospered they really prospered some of them were so so wealthy uh, in Surah Al-Qasas chapter 28 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about a man who was so wealthy so rich from the people of Musa. His name was Qarun. Qarun, inna Qaruna, starting from verse 76, chapter 28. Inna Qaruna kana min qawmi Musa fabagha alayhim. Qarun was from the people of Musa. He was from Bani Israel. And he transgressed against them. He rebelled against them. He rejected the faith. He rejected the teachings of Musa and Harun and he was very rich extremely rich and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes his wealth by telling us how many keys he had for his treasures the keys were so many and so heavy to be carried by a gang of very strong people. Can you imagine now how beautiful it is? Knuz treasures, so many. And instead of telling us how much he had in the treasures, Allah is telling us the weight of the keys to the treasure. They were so heavy to the extent 
a gang, a very strong gang of men cannot even lift them up. Oh my goodness, what wealth was that? إذ قال له قومه لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب فيو he was so arrogant he felt you know sometimes he he people would feel elated they feel they are above everyone else what we call self importance I'm very important you see because of the wealth he thought He's so important. He's better than everyone else. So he's measuring or comparing his wealth to other people. And I am so rich that I must be better than you. His people advised him. لا تفرح. فرح in Arabic means happiness. But it doesn't mean here لا تفرح. Don't be happy. It means don't be arrogant. Don't you see, al-farah al-ladhi yudhib al-shukr. You can be, you, you, sometimes people become so arrogant, so happy, so jubilant, so triumphant. You see, you talk about uh, triumph and, and, and uh, elation and uh, uh, jubilation. And then you don't thank Allah. You don't even Admit that the blessings you have are from Allah. No, it's, it's, it's because of me. Nothing to do with Allah. Okay, fine. You have committed kufr just by saying that. قال له قومه لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب الفر. Allah does not love those who exalt. So, so let let me read the the full translation. Behold, his people said to him, exalt. Not, do not exult, do not show or feel triumphant or elation or jubilation. Fear Allah because Allah does not love those who exult in riches. Okay, number one, clear. Number two, but seek with the wealth which Allah has bestowed on you the home of the hereafter. Use the money, use the wealth to do good deeds, to help the poor and the needy. In different forms, in so many forms, in so many ways. You cannot just have the wealth for yourself and hug your wealth in this life because you know very well in another verse, Allah tells us that those who hug their wealth in this life, it will turn into a color twisted color of iron around their neck, heated up. So the money you hugged in this life to hug you in the, in, in the hellfire. So the people are very sensible. They are saying to him, seek the pleasure of Allah by helping people with your wealth. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا but in the meantime, don't forget your portion in this world. It doesn't mean because uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, piling or hoarding wealth, uh, I shouldn't spend on myself or my family. Don't forget your share. As, enjoy yourself. What they are saying, enjoy yourself. As long as it is a lawful enjoyment, use the money, the wealth, to help people and also to support yourself and your family. Be, but be sensible. Don't be wasteful, don't show off, be, 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 uh, uh, strike a, a balance in between. And remember that whatever you spend in, in the sake of Allah or for the sake of Allah or in the cause of Allah, it will come back to you more and more as Allah promises. وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ And be good. As Allah been good to you, be good as well. Try to, to understand this. Be good as Allah has been good to you. Be good. وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ And do not spread mischief in the land. Don't use the money to bribe other people. Don't use the money to take something which is not yours. Don't use the money to corrupt the world around you. وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إن الله 
لا يحب المفسدين because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love those who do mischief okay so number one seek in the wealth you have been given the hereafter invest invest for the hereafter invest for your home in the hereafter do not forget about your share in this life be good as Allah has been good to you do not spread mischief in the land okay let me read the footnote that's spend your wealth in charity and good works it is Allah who has given it to you and you should spend it in Allah's cause nor should you forget the legitimate needs of this life as misers do and most people become misers who think too exclusively of their wealth. If wealth is not used properly, there are three evils that follow. Number one, its possessor may be a miser and forget all claims due to himself and those about him. Two, he may forget the higher needs of the poor and needy or the good causes which require support. And three, he may even misspend on occasions and cause a great deal of harm and mischief. Apparently, Karun had all three vices. In the next verse, verse 78, chapter 28, Surah Al-Qasas, the narration, قَالَ إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيْتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي SubhanAllah, look how arrogant the man was. No, this money I have, I have created it or have acquired it because of my knowledge. I am a clever guy. Nothing to do with God. Please don't bring God into the discussion because it's me. I'm very clever. I'm very smart. I work in the stock exchange. I know how to buy and sell shares and commodities. And I made all this wealth because of my cleverness. I start at five o'clock in the morning or four o'clock. To, to deal with the Japanese markets and then I continue all the evening to deal with the American markets. So I am working so hard. It is my knowledge and my expertise which made me this wealth. Nothing to do with God. So please don't talk about God to me. That was Karun. Very similar to the guy in Surat Al-Kahf who had the beautiful gardens may recall the story I mentioned many, I mentioned it many times in the past. Uh, again, he entered his garden and he in a state of injustice or he caused himself great injustice. Qarun, the same. Okay. أَوَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَهْلَكَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنَ الْقُرُونِ مَنْ هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُ قُوَّةً وَأَكْثَهُ جَمْعًا So Allah is saying, didn't he know? That Allah has destroyed so many people before him who are much, much stronger than him. And more than him. And the criminals, the sinners, will not be questioned about or called to account for their sin. They will, you see, let me, let me explain this. You see, they come on the, these criminals, these sinners, these arrogant people, come on the DFG, they, you, you can, the face recognition, they, they know, the angels know from their face, these are criminals. They, they use face recognition. Would you, from their faces, they tell, come here, these are criminals, they are sinners, come this way. But the wicked are not called immediately to account for their sins, even in this life. But, in the day of judgment as well on the day of judgment as well this is going to be the time when we will settle all the accounts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is is telling him through his people who are following Musa and Harun that behave yourself be good and the response was nothing to do with God why do you bring God into it it's me I'm clever enough and it's me who did it who made it okay fine one day he decided to parade 
in the streets of ancient Egypt with all his glitter and wealth. People gathered along the roads to watch him. Don't forget, we are not, we are, there are many people among us who would desire the wealth which Allah gave to others. And very often, they forget the, the, the word or the sentence, Al Aishu Aishu Al Akhirah. The real life is the life of the hereafter, not this life. Some, sometimes people you pass, you drive uh, uh, in a road and you see houses, oh my goodness. Five million pounds, ten million pounds. Oh my goodness! Oh, I wish if I have a house like that. Yes. So people, call alladina yuridun al hayat al dunya. Those who were interested in this life, what did they say? Exactly what I've just said. Ya laita lana mithla ma uti akarun inna hu la duhadra. We should. Oh, we wished if we would have been given like Karun. Surely he is a lucky man. He's so lucky. Look what he has. Oh, look at the cars and the properties. Oh my goodness, look at the way uh, he dresses and, uh, and, and the holidays he went on. He goes on. Ya layta lana mithla ma utiya qarunu innahu ladu hazzin azim. Ah, we wish that we have the like of what Qarun has got. For he is truly a lord of mighty good fortune. Oh, with that we had the like of what Karun is given. Most surely he is possessed of mighty good fortune. Hazd Azim. Ah, oh, he's so lucky. So they measure the luck by material gains. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ But there are people there. There were people there who have been given the knowledge, ilm here, ilm, ilm, the knowledge of divine revelations, the knowledge of what Musa and Harun taught. Wailakum, what's going on? What's wrong with you guys? Thawabullahi khayrun liman amana amila salih. The reward of Allah is much better to those who believe and do good deeds. Stop looking and desiring what He has, what Allah gives you is better, his forgiveness, his reward to those who believe and do good deeds. Don't, don't compare yourselves to, to Qarun. And those who will really receive this will be those who persevere patiently. Don't rush. Don't be impatient. What happened? At this moment in time, you won't believe that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the earth فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ Oh my goodness. Open the earth, his palace, and all his wealth went into the ground. Deep into the earth. We have a lake in Egypt, about 80 kilometers uh, west, I think it is uh, southwest of Cairo, of Giza, in a place called Al Fayyum, it's known as Buhayrat Karun, the Lake of Karun. Can you imagine the Lake of Karun, Buhayrat Karun? And under there was his wealth and his palaces and his property. Everything is there in Buhayrat Karun. فخسفنا به وبداره الأرض فما كان له من فئة ينصرونه من دون الله وما كان من المنتصرين. Then we caused the earth to swallow up him and his house, and he had not the least little party to help him against Allah, nor could he defend himself. Okay, and those who 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 wished yesterday that they were as rich as him, what did they say? وأصبح الذين تمنوا مكانه بالأمس يقولون وكأن الله يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء من عباده ويقدر and those who had envied his position the day before began to say on the morrow ah it is indeed Allah who enlarges the provision or restricts it to any of his servants as he pleases لولا أمن الله علينا لخسف بنا 
وكأنه لا يفلح الكافرون Had it not been that Allah was gracious to us He could have caused the earth to swallow us up uh, Those who reject Allah will assuredly never prosper أقول قول هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر من فاستغفروه إنه غفور رحيم and please do not forget we need your support please please we need your financial help to continue the construction and the development of our mosque please donate generously may Allah سبحانه وتعالى اللهم اشفنا وعافنا وعفنا اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا واقض الدين عن المدينين وفرج هم المهمومين ونفس كرب المكروبين وفك أسر المأسورين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا أمنا بما أنزلت واتبعنا الرسول فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين